Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU, and this is day three of our intro to econ unit plan. This is a slide walkthrough video. I'm just sort of go through the slides, let you know what we were thinking um, as we put this together, how maybe uh, just to model how you might want to do it for your classroom. So as a bell ringer, ask your students for your fav their favorite invention ever. You actually want to have them come up with a few of them. And then you want to have them look up when that invention was invented and put it on a timeline. You can project this um, or you can write it on the board and, or, and just have them come up and mark. Now, this is a little tricky, but you want to make sure that the students don't they can't pick something that somebody has picked before. Now, what you should find is, yes, some people do fire. Yes, some people will do the, the printing press um, or farming, which are all old inventions. But most of the inventions, especially if you make it so they can't pick something that somebody has picked before, are going to cluster right around our present time. You know, cell phone, TV, radio, airplane, bike, all these, whatever. Most, uh, you know, most are going to cluster um, recently. And this is an introduction to uh, economic growth. This is one way uh, that you can illustrate. You can see well, all these all these inventions, all these things I think of as like big inventions are all happening relatively close to the present. What's going on there? Segue into the storyline activity. If you don't aren't familiar with these, the way they work is basically you make a guess about a trend. So here the trend we're guessing at is world GDP, but it's basically the size of um, the world economy. Okay. And so you're going to trace it out, make your guess. I guess something like this. I sort of know what this is. Oh, 99. Look at that. Um, but in the idea here is like, whoa, 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 what's going on? This is the hockey stick of growth, you know, named because it has this hockey stick shape most of the economic growth has happened in the past 200 years which i think people often think it's linear oh things got a little better things got a little better no that's not how it happened basically over the past um 200 years we've seen an explosion in uh in growth and we have a video outlining that one of uh, my favorite videos the hockey stick of human progress and it sort of walks through this explosion in economic growth that we've seen in the past 200 years. Here's some questions to answer. Um, as they watch the video, when did life expectancy start rising? How does the wealth of an average individual in the US today compare to an average individual in 1000 BC or 1500 AD? We are much, much richer due to this economic growth. And again, what exactly is that? Well, it's an increase in the quantity and quality of the goods and services. So. When that when you see that growth take off like that, what that means is the uh, the country or the world has a much higher productive capacity. They can make so much more stuff, and that stuff is of higher uh, higher quality. Okay, so who cares? It's just a bunch of stuff. Why should we care about economic growth? Well, it turns out that economic growth is correlated with a lot of other things we might actually really really care about: life expectancy infant mortality, literacy, uh, decreased child labor, increased happiness. And in the next couple slides, we show um, you know the data for all this. So increased life expectancy. as the as the world has gotten richer, people are living living much, much longer. Okay. Crash in infant mortality. You know, back in the day, about half your children would die, okay? Uh, now that infant mortality has gone to, you know, record low levels. This is the fruits of growth. As we've gotten richer, these are the type of things we can afford. Longer lives and less infant mortality. If you care about books, you care about literacy, you can see, oh, you know, the number of books really takes off with that economic growth. You can see how much more literate people are. And this is what I always say. <laughs> There's always people, 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 people always say, hey, you know, hey, you know, all, all this economic growth. You know, we we got all this more of this stuff, and people are like, well, people, and people say to me like, how come you know people are so stupid though? I said, so there's so many dumb, so many dumb people, um, out there. Like, how can how can this be possible? I say, look, there are always dumb people. The difference now is at least the dumb people can read. Back in like 1800, the dumb people couldn't even read. So we're making progress here. All right. And happiness, uh, this is actually life satisfaction. And so as a country gets richer, 
the average level of life satisfaction goes up. And then these little arrows are within the country that as people are richer within those countries, they are uh, they are happier or more satisfied with their life, I think is the actual wording of the question. How satisfied with you are you with your life in this given moment? One to ten. All right. We have a good, really, 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 really fun video from Hans uh, Rosling and the Our World and Data people here. If you have time for it, highly recommend it. Okay. Some questions for review. What is the hockey stick of human prosperity? That is this takeoff in economic growth that corresponds to, um, you know, decreased child mortality, increased life expectancy, increased life satisfaction. Ask the students to define economic growth. Um, it is uh, the increase in uh, the productive capacity of the world, basically, or whatever we're measuring with that economic growth, whether it be a country or the world. And uh, fill in the table below with uh, some measures that are correlated with economic growth. Again, the answers, we have the answers for these. Uh, if you sign up for the unit plan, uh, the answers uh, for these, the specific answers for these are in that student answer sheet. Okay. You want to ask your students to have a discussion. What's the most surprising thing they learned? Is there another measure? Like, okay, we're using economic growth. We're using life expectancy. We're using uh, uh, we're using uh, happiness. Is there something else we should be looking at? You know, people can have different opinions on this. Uh, maybe we should be looking at the shape of the distribution, how equal it is. Uh, maybe we should be thinking a, more about pollution. And then ask them to explain economic growth to a friend or family member. This is like sort of trying to get it to put it in their own words, a little bit of metacognition. You know, how would you describe this to a, a friend or family member? Okay. This comes from the video. Um, what were the first three items you used after you woke up? When were those invented? How much worse would your life be without them? So just, again, getting them thinking like, these are things you sort of use every day that you don't even think about. Chances are, whatever they used first thing they woke up are, are relatively recent uh, uh, inventions. Electric toothbrush, maybe and a lot of the cell phone probably is probably the first thing. Um, and then running water, maybe running water, relatively recent um, invention as well. All right, that's day three. Going over this big idea of economic growth and its importance and how really people's lives have been transformed by that uh, by that growth. If you don't already have the unit plan, there is a link on screen. Or if you'd like to move to the next day, check out the next walkthrough video.